Illustrative Math, Algebra 2, Unit 2, Lesson 2 is called Funding the Future. All right, our learning goal today is I can use a polynomial to model an investment situation. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Take a minute, pause the screen, see if you can come up with anything. <clears throat> um, let's write down some notices. So, notice. Um, they all equal 329. When you think about it, <clears throat> if you add up all of these, add up all these little squares, 329. If I just do this math here, that's 329. 300, think about dollar bills. If you had $300 bills, two $10 bills, and nine ones, that would equal $329. And then do your exponent first. This is going to be 100 times 3. That's 300. This is 10 times 2 is 20. And then this is 1. 10 to the 0 is 1. That ends up being the same thing, 329. So they're all equal to 329. Uh, let's see here. What are some other notices? Um, <clears throat> each block is one unit. Um, you might notice that they are grouped during groups. So if we go back here during groups of 100 and 100 I call it hundreds and and ones. <clears throat> um Now, you might say that second one there isn't in tens or hundreds, I guess. Um, but 300 is a multiple of 100. 20 is a multiple of 10. And 9 is a multiple of 1. Um, let's see. Some wonder. Why are we using powers of 10? That could be a good question. So let's write a wonder. Are we using power of 10? Um, could you write other numbers this way? Does this only work Work for 329? Or can we write all numbers this way? <clears throat> all right. All right, so here's a polynomial, P of x. And P of X is equal to 5X cubed plus 6X squared plus 4X. So the first thing we're going to do is evaluate this function for X equals 5 and X equals 15. So we're going to do P of 5. <clears throat> so we're going to plug in 5 for X. All right. So when I plug that in, oh, it's negative 5. Whoops, P of negative 5. So when I plug in negative 5, I get negative 495. Okay. <clears throat> when I plug in 15 for P, All right, plug that in, type it into your calculator, and you should get 18,285. <clears throat> so how does knowing that 5,000 plus 600 plus 40 equals 5,640 help you solve this equation here? Well, how does this help you solve this? Well, if you think of this here as 5 times, think of it as 10 cubed plus 6 times 10 squared plus 4 times 10. I'm basically 
just breaking down this 5,000 into powers of 10, 600 into power of 10, and same with the 40. If I add all that up, that would allow me to realize that because it's x cubed and then 10 cubed, and it's x squared and then 10 squared, and it's 1x and just really 110 there, we could say that, oh, okay, x equals 10. All right, so that's how we could kind of see it there. <clears throat> So at the end of 12th grade, Claire's aunt started investing money for her to use after graduating from college four years later. The first deposit was $300. If R is the annual interest rate of the account, then at the end of each school year, the balance in the account is multiplied by a growth factor of X equals one plus R. So what does this mean? So if like, say you earn 8%, your growth factor is gonna be one plus and we got to make it a decimal, 1 plus 0 0.08 be 1.08, all right? Um, if your rate was, let's say your rate was, you know, 10%. Say you were earned 10% on your, on your um, investment, it'd be 1 plus 0 0.10, which would be 1.10. So that's your growth factor. Remember, a factor is something you multiply. So basically, every year you're multiplying by 1.10, if, if that's your rate, okay? Now, um, <clears throat> we don't know what the rate is, so we're just going to use x here to represent the whole thing. So after one year, the total value is 300x. You take your $300 and you times it by x. And again, x is 1 plus your rate. After two years, you're gonna multiply it by X again. So that's how they get this 300 XX, which would give me 300 X squared. So after graduation, right here, graduation is four years. So I think that one would be 300 and then there's gonna be four X's. So that would just condense into 300 X to the fourth. So if Claire's aunt had invested $500 at the end of her freshman year, what would the expression be for the total value after graduation in terms of X? So <clears throat> you got your initial 300 and you're going to multiply it by your growth factor, one plus your rate, four times. Okay, so that's at the start. So you got four years but then you're gonna add in an extra 500. Now this 500 is at the end of your freshman year, so it only has three years to go, okay? So this would be end of freshman year, okay? So that would be the total. Now, if you wanted to add something at the end of your sophomore year, you'd only have two years left for that to grow. Okay, so that's gonna lead us into the third question. So you got you got your 300 for four years, so it's you're multiplying it by X four times, and then you got your 500 at the end of your freshman year, so that only has three years to grow your 250 at the end of your sophomore year has two years, and then your 400 is X, okay? Because it only has one year to grow. That would give you your total at the end of graduation. <clears throat> Number four, the total amount Y in dollars after four years is a function y equals c of x of the growth factor x. If the total Claire receives after graduation is $1,580, use a graph to find the interest rate that the account accrued. So what I'm gonna do is when I use my graph, I'm gonna graph this function and I'm gonna graph the function in number three right here and I'm gonna see where they intersect. 
and that's going to tell me what the growth factor is because again we're looking to find or we're, we're looking for the x coordinate of the intersection because x is the growth factor so i'm going to go here and i'm going to type in y equals or c of x equals what was it it was um <clears throat> 1580. now i got to change my my um, axes here so i'm going to just Let's see here. I'm going to make my X go from zero to two. And the reason I said two, because I knew it was one plus your rate. So it's going to be one plus a decimal. So it's going to be somewhere between one and two, but I went all the way to zero. <clears throat> I need to make my Y axis go up to at least 1580 right here. So I'm going to make it go up to like, I don't know, 1700. Oops, I need to go from zero to 1700 <clears throat> maybe go a little negative maybe go negative 100 so i can see my axis there so there we go so there's my first graph second one is y equals 300x to the fourth plus 500x cubed plus 250x squared plus 400x. So I need to maybe move my graph a little bit, find the intersection. And I look at the x coordinate and we get 1.0349. So 1x equals 1.0349. Remember it's one plus your rate, okay? So the rate would be one plus 0 0.0349. So your rate would be point, 0 0.0349. Or if you wanted it as a percentage, it'd be 3.49%. Whoops. Three point four nine percent. Okay. <clears throat> so here is another polynomial, similar to what we just did. How long ago did the account open? How can you tell? So obviously you're going to look here at the highest power, which is fifteen. So your answer would be fifteen years ago. Highest power is 15. So that means <clears throat> this $200 right here would be growing the longest. It's 15 years. This $100, you put in like a year later, that's growing for 14. $500, he put in way later and it only grows for five years. And then the 300 is only growing for two years. <clears throat> So how can you tell that the last time money was put in the account was $300 two years ago? I would say two is the lowest exponent. So the coefficient of 300 has been growing for two years. <clears throat> Suppose that 300 was deposited into the account eight years ago. How would you need to change the equation? Well, we would just have to add in here a 300 times x to the eighth. So we would change this C of x, keep the 200 x to the 15th, 300 x to the eighth plus i guess maybe i kind of put in the wrong spot maybe I, i'd like to keep my powers going in order so maybe if i i'll keep the hundred x to the 14th then i'll put in the 300 x to the eighth
let's say the interest rate is 5% and we want to know what C of X is. We're putting values into a calculator to find C of X. What might go wrong? <clears throat> well, some people might plug in five for X, okay? They plug in X equals five, that would be wrong. If people plugged in X equals 0 0.05, that would be wrong as well. Your rate is equal to one, I'm sorry, X is equal to one plus your rate. So it's one plus 0 0.05. So you need to make sure you plug in X as 1.05. <clears throat> so what you'd really be looking for is C of 1.05, and you'd have to plug that in for X. So it'd be 200 times 1.05 to the 15th plus 100, 1.05 to the 14th and then you just fill it in all the way through. And when you plug that in and get your, get your final Answer that would be, let me get my calculator here. end up getting $1,153.90. So if you think about it, how much did they actually invest? They invested, these are the amounts that they actually invested. So if you added all those up, <clears throat> 200 plus 100 plus 300 plus 500 plus 300, it's 1,400. Uh-oh, that doesn't make sense. I must have messed something up here. <clears throat> so he they put $1400 in and I got this number. So I must have I must have made a mistake. Let me double check my math here. 200 to 1.05 cuz the number after they invest it should be greater than the amount they put in. So let me double check this here. Ah, there we go. I must have made a little mistake in my calculator. So I got $2,025.91. So obviously the amount invested is greater than the amount, or the amount that they earned after interest is greater than the amount invested, okay? <clears throat> All right, last thing here, cool down. Same type of situation, x equals 1 plus r. So here's my function, a of x, 800x to the fourth, fourth plus 350x cubed plus 500x squared plus 600x. Keeps the amount in the account after four years and the growth factor is x. We'll see a total amount in the account if the interest rate is 3%. So x is going to be 1.03. So you're going to basically plug it in. So a of one point. Oh, 03 
So go ahead, plug that into your calculator and you should get 2,431 dollars. Okay, so again, look at how much they invested. If you added up the, the coefficients, 800, 350, 500, and 600, add those up, 850 plus 350 plus 500 plus 600, you'd see they only invested $2,300 and it grew to 2,431. So obviously this number should always be bigger than the coefficients added. So how much was put into the account at the beginning? Well, that would be right down here. That would be oh, at the very beginning. I guess this would be in total, actually. This would not be your answer here for number two. Your total would be 2,300, but in the beginning, that would be the very first coefficient in front of the highest power. So that'd be $800 to start. After five years, $200 is added to the account. Use the expression A of X to write a new expression, B of X, that represents how much is in it after five years. So everything's going to be longer now. So that 800 is going to be for five years instead of four. The 350 is going to go for four years. 500 goes for three. 600 is now going to be for two years. And then the 200 is going to be for one year. <clears throat> okay. So everything got moved up one because it's a year later. So the $800 is now for five years. The 350 is now for four. Everything's one greater on the power. Okay. All right. Hope you enjoyed this lesson.